So I'll, I guess while I continue to wait, I'll maybe just get a jump start on things. Um, so I'm the art gallery assistant at the Norfolk Art Centre, which is located in Simcoe, Ontario, which is a, um, located in a rural municipality um, in southwestern Ontario on the shores of Lake Erie. Um, the population of Simcoe, uh, there we go, is uh, 16 thousand people so it's really uh, a, not a big center. Um, it was incorporated in 1974 as the Linwood Art Center so we just celebrated our 40th year in operation um, as a public art gallery. In 2003 it was assumed by Norfolk County um, and became part of the municipality's heritage and culture division and at that time, uh, the name was changed to the Norfolk Art Center. Uh, we are also a national historic site. Uh, so you can see um, that we're actually housed in a historic building, a neoclassical structure that was built in 1851, which can you know, cause some issues of its own. Um, there are two permanent full-time staff, myself and director curator uh, Deirdre Chisholm. Okay, um, so we are a contemporary art gallery um, and our collection is dedicated to the collection of works of art by local, regional, and national artists from 1945 onwards. Um, we have a mix of uh, exhibitions that are um, curated from outside art, or that involve outside artists and uh, permanent collection works, uh, which we, um, we accompany those exhibitions by artist talks, films, lectures, workshops, etc. Um, compared to most of you in the room, we have a rather small collection, um, just over 800 artworks, and that includes um, works that we have on our grounds um, outdoors. Um, a few highlights from our collection, uh, we have a work by Alex Colville that was recently on exhibition at the National Gallery and uh, the AGO. Uh, work by William Kerlick, a, a Western artist, and a rather significant uh, uh, collection of works by Painters 11 artist Tom Hodgson and uh, William Ronald. So maybe quite unusual for a rural um, art gallery in uh, Ontario. So um, the next short slide is going to say why reorg and as you can see this is our storage room um, in the summer of 2014 when we had applied to uh, participate in uh, the inaugural iteration of reorg um, so again maybe in comparison to some some storage rooms it doesn't look so bad but it was uh, certainly causing some problems for us um, in terms of accessibility to the artworks and um, the conservation of the artworks. Um, so you can see at the um, slide on your, I'm just gonna use this, uh, you? there we go, slide here. Um, about 50% of our works on canvas were sitting on the floor. They were stacked, you know, seven to 10 deep. Um, many of them were just too large to accommodate on the screen racks that we had. Uh, we only had five screen racks, they were full. Um, we have a small collection of large sculptures, all of which were sitting on the floor. Um, here again, you can see in front of all of our paintings. So every time we had to access a painting, um, we also had to move those sculptures. Um, the layout was just not conducive to moving large works of art and navigation was a major problem for us. Uh, we also had a lot of non-collections works that were stored in the collections room and uh, by that I mean AV equipment, packing material, um, boxes of VHS tapes from the 1980s, um, special event supplies, all those kinds of things. Um, so we had made some incremental progress over the previous two years. Um, through the assistance of Young Canada Works, we were able to hire collections assistants. 
Um, with their help, uh, we were able to condition report on and digitize 100% of the collection by the time we were applying for reorg. And we were doing this in preparation for the establishment of a digital database, which we began in the summer of 2014 using past perfect software. So our storage self-evaluation. Um, as you can see, um, we are in the needs improvement, doing okay needs small improvements. And I, can't, I don't know what the orange section is, um, but you know, pardon? Need a project, yes, that's right. <laughs> so we are fair to middling in all categories and as you can see, our management was particularly lacking. Uh, we also took an average, Deirdre did the self-evaluation, as did I, and we also did ask our collections assistant at the time to do the self-evaluation. Um, according to her, we were in dire, dire straits, and we were in the red across the board. So it was, it was kind of interesting to get uh, that perspective. Uh, so you can see we had quite a bit of work to do in all areas. So I'm, I'm just gonna talk about the phases that we went through. Um, in our first phase, we had to construct floor plans. Uh, you saw um, the participants' floor plans earlier today. Um, so we're lucky we have a heritage architect on our advisory board, and we enlisted her to do two-scale architectural drawings for us. Um, so we got these you know, wonderful um, drawings that we'll be able to use going forward. And they also became an important part of our um, action and implementation plan going forward. Um, so here you can see um, some of, maybe some of our problems a bit more clearly. Um, our storage racks, our screen racks for our paintings um, are encased by utility shelves um, and then bookcases, sculptures, pedestals on this, the other side. So actually accessing any work on our screen racks was a real challenge. Uh, we have some fixed shelving here, map cabinets, and some other rather decrepit compartmentalized storage units along the wall. Um, so while you know, most of it is collections, we had a lot of collections on the floor. Um, and the pink uh, non-collections are you know, a kind of mix of loose works on paper, oversized portfolios that we couldn't accommodate in proper storage and we're kind of just sitting in large makeshift uh, card port portfolio boxes and a lot of packing material and even um, cabinetry that we weren't using anymore but hadn't been discarded. Um, yeah, so the condition report. Um, I have to say that our implementation plan, as you will see, was pretty straightforward. Um, but the condition report, I, I feel, was maybe the most time-consuming part of the reorg project for us. Um, so it really asked you to take a very close look at, you know, these four categories. Um, Simon had asked us to um, submit the report by the end of January. We also had three grant deadlines, two due in January, one of which was MAV, two exhibitions to install, and a fundraiser to start planning. So it was a pretty, um, pretty intense month for us. Um, so some of the key findings in relation to the collection had to do with, um, you know, uh, the metrics that came out. So we discovered that about 80% of our floor space was occupied by units at that time. That has not changed. Um, our, un our average unit fullness, when you considered um, the number of non-collections works, especially that were there, um, that could be removed, was really not too bad, 66%. Uh, we just didn't have enough furniture to actually accommodate all of the collection. Our average room height usage was 75%. And our overall fullness was at about 60%. Uh, we had already, we had always known we had a lot of works on paper, um, but through the collections analysis, we discovered that about 70% of our collection is works on paper, 25% um, paintings, and the rest is comprised of textiles and sculptures. 
On the good side, about 95% of the collection at that point was inventoried and accessioned, and about 50% of the objects could be retrieved within three minutes by Deirdre or myself, um, because we have had no location system at that time. Um, it would have been a real challenge for um, anyone who didn't have the kind of institutional memory that Deirdre or I had to, to find collection works. So some of our main issues, our, flight, our floor space usage uh, was and still is pretty much at capacity. There's not much we can do in adding new furniture in order to uh, grow, our or grow our capacity to collect. Um, the collection analysis really highlighted that we had inadequate storage for works on paper. Um, so while our main priority still remained getting whatever artworks were on the floor, um, off the floor and onto proper units, um, this really flagged um, the storage of works on paper um, as a, a, a priority future project for us. Um, the screen racks uh, for our paintings were highly unstable um, and again, just not large enough to accommodate the collection. Uh, no storage units for the large sculptures and no location system, which was highly problematic. So uh, we determined that in order to address some of these problems, we were going to need to invest in quite a bit of furniture. Um, so we thought to address some of um, the storage problems we were having with our works on paper, we could invest in some new flat file cabinetry um, to maximize on what uh, vertical space usage we had. A screen rack system with eight to 10 racks, five mobile platforms for our large sculptures, um, a new fixed shelving unit, a compartmentalized shelving unit for our framed collections. Um, we also needed to establish a location system and uh, we really need to relocate all of our non-collection items um, to another room in the building. Because in such a small space, our storage area is only it's uh, 18 by 32 feet, and our ceilings are only eight feet high. So it's a pretty small space to be maneuvering um, some of the larger artworks. So what was our project budget? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, in addition to those, um, uh, you know, those additions of furniture, we also really wanted to take this opportunity to replace the flooring um, and paint the room. And we had initially thought, uh, replace our lights with new energy efficient LED lights. Um, I don't know if you noticed in our, the earlier photographs, but we had previously had carpet <laughs> in the collections room that was at the very least 30 years old. Um, it really needed to be removed and replaced with an industrial flooring that would just be more conservation friendly. Um, so, yes, yeah, so our screen rack system, when we started to get the hard quotes for, for this furniture, um, you know, we started to resign ourselves to the fact that we probably weren't going to be able to accomplish um, all, of, all of this in one phase. Uh, the screen rack system alone um, actually cost us just over $20,000, wood cost us $21,000. Uh, fixed shelving 3500 mobile platforms 1500 uh, We did source a used flat file cabinet from Kijiji. That was about 250 New flooring, 5000 painting, 1000 So our project budget was over $31,000. Um, with lights, it would have been well over $35,000. Uh, we were successful in our MAP grant application. So we knew we had $10,000 to um, spend on our screen rack system. And this is just a picture of our MPP, Diane Finley, who um, held a press conference at the gallery to announce our, our MAP grant, fund, grant funding. So in the end, um, we were actually able to cover all of the costs of the program, of the project. So we had $10,000 from MAP. Uh, we matched that with $10,000 from our capital budget, which was the entirety of our capital budget from 2015. 
Um, we also apply to a local community foundation for $5,000 um, to cover the cost of the platforms on casters and the new fixed shelving. And we just tried to pull in money from any other budget line that we could <laughs> to cover the rest. <laughs> so these were our major purchases um, with that money. So here we can see right there. Uh, here's our um, Montel screen rack system with 10 racks, 10 nine foot racks. Our new compartmentalized shelving unit and um, some platforms with casters for our large sculptures. So our action plan and implementation plan. Uh, so here you can see our floor plans make a reappearance and of course, we only work in the most sophisticated, with the most sophisticated technology at our site, Mr. Sketch Markers and Scissors and Glue. Um, so to tell the truth, there wasn't much we could do when it came to the reconfiguration of the space. And when we took into consideration architectural details of the room, um, we really weren't looking, it really limited our options in terms of the reconfiguration. So we started with the known knowns. This shelving was not moving. That was a promise we made to our community services when we installed it. Um, this was really the only place that we could put the new screen rack system. It just wouldn't, couldn't be accommodated uh, at any other location. Um, and then again, here and here, those are really the only locations that we could put um, our second fixed shelving unit and our, our map cabinets. So we are basically considering how are we going to move the utility shelves and how are we going to configure the utility shelves and where are the mobile platforms going to go. And uh, we just determined they would kind of be housed down here. And at the time that I was putting together the action plan, um, we hadn't yet received, received the funding from uh, the Norfolk Community Foundation. Um, so I actually made notes that some of these projects were earmarked for a year two or a second phase. Um, so our implementation plan, we actually had a rather small team uh, working on the implementation of our reorganization. Uh, we don't have technicians at the gallery our communities, Norfolk County Community Services Group um, essentially act as our technicians and uh, they were the muscle <laughs> for the project. Um, we had Rachel, a Guelph University experiential learning student who joined, joined us for two to three days a week. And Rebecca, who we employed through Young Canada Works as a collections assistant. So in advance of the plans, maybe some people who participated in the workshop will recog uh, recognize this. Um, we kind of brainstormed, just using sticky notes, everything that would have to happen and loosely organized it in a timeline. Um, and then we did again <laughs> a very uh, rough draft of what our swing space configuration would look like. Um, and then I also wrote out the order in which the move would take place. So it was pretty clear that the very first thing that we had to move out of storage was the compact shelving, um, which would go here, um, then the sculptures, and then it was a bit of Tetris after that to accommodate all of, um, all of the paintings. Um, so this was you know, just a few uh, pictures from our swing space, which actually ended up being my office, <laughs> unexpectedly. Um, so just a little bit of a backstory here. In 2003, when um, we came under the umbrella of Norfolk County, it was decided that we would share the building with Norfolk County Corporate Services. So for, um, you know, 12 or 13 years, we actually Shared, off it, shared the building with our human resources department and they occupied about 40% of the space. In December of 2014, they were supposed to be moving to a new uh, central administration building. Um, then it was 
February of 2015, and then March of 2015, and then a date yet to be determined. Um, so initially we had planned on using those vacated offices as our swing space when it became clear that they may not be available to us, um, my office became the swing space and Becca had to move into the kitchen uh, for the remainder of the, of the summer and that was, that was her office. Um, so again, my office was not very large, um, certainly maybe not even as large as the storage room, so things became pretty cramped and I had a pretty narrow route to my desk. And yeah, we didn't really have any extra furniture to put the works on, so they basically um, rested on the floor, which wasn't great, but it was um, the best we could do. Uh, yeah, sorry, just to go back. So our, uh, like I said, our implementation plan was actually um, pretty straightforward. Um, we moved the collection over two days. Uh, the majority of the collection we were able to move out in one day, uh, one full day, June 3rd. Um, and then by the end of J the uh, next day, uh, we had completely cleared the room of all artworks um, as well as any furniture um, that needed to be moved to um, a temporary storage space or that was just destined for the dump. Um, so the cl collection basically sat there for the next, in my office, for the next 10 weeks um, while we completed some renovations and installed new equipment. Um, so we did replace the flooring. Uh, we had a, a bit of, um, not a glitch, but an unexpected expenditure when it came to the floor. Um, so we discovered that um, the area in which we wanted to um, put the new screen rack unit was not level. Um, so we did have to level the floor in that area. Uh, we decided to not do the entire floor and to just uh, focus on, on that primary location. Um, so it added an extra $500 um, to our budget that we hadn't planned for, but it was, we felt absolutely necessary. Uh, we did have the room painted um, and then about mid-August, um, out of the box associates who we worked with um, to source our Montel uh, racking system, um, installed the rack just over a couple of days. And then, <laughs> uh, yeah, so these are basically the after pictures of our storage room. Um, the repatriation was, again, a pretty painless um, process, and we were able to repatriate uh, most of the works within a two-day time period. Um, we didn't really worry about taking an inventory of where the works were going. Uh, we did do an inventory of works that went on to the new screen rack unit um, because we didn't want to have to take them off and handle them again um, to do to do that inventory. Um, aside from that, we basically just moved everything in and in the last work, uh, the last week of her work term, uh, Rebecca spent that time um, recording the locations of all of the artworks in the collection. Um, yeah, so you can see here our, our, I'll just go forward, that'll be easier. So these are before and afters. Um, you can see a vast improvement to our ability to house our um, collection of works on, our works on canvas. Um, we were able to achieve our primary goal of getting all of our artworks off the floor and into proper cabinetry. So these are some of our key results. And you can see here um, where we improved in our self-evaluation. So our management improved a little bit. We still have a long way to go in that particular area. Um, and in building in space, it improved a little bit as well. Well, where we made real headway was in the collection and furniture areas. Um, so it's worth noting that while renovations were taking place, um, Rebecca and Rachel um, were really um, industrious 
and managed to populate our collections database with 100% of our accession records. That was a great outcome for us at the end of the summer um, and has really improved our ability to manage the collection. So we saw a 50% increase as well to storage for works on paper through the purchase of that second file cabinet. A 25% increase to our vertical storage capacity, a 25% increase to our fixed shelving capacity. 99% of the artworks are off the floor and housed in appropriate storage units. We have one um, very heavy, long, white sculpture that doesn't quite fit in any of our current units, so we'll have to deal with that going forward. The location of all artworks are recorded and ready to be input into the database. And um, presently that is happening. We have a co-op student from our local high school and we have a volunteer that comes in once a week and um, they've been inputting the locations into the database. And I suspect um, that by the time our collections assistant re resumes work in the summer, Rachel is joining us again. Um, that will have been completed. Um, so all of our non-collections have essentially been removed with the excep ex exception of works waiting for review by the acquisition committee or waiting to be accessioned. And every object can be retrieved without moving more than two other objects. So we really did achieve all of our primary objectives within the scope of this pro project. That being said, um, we do still have a number of outstanding issues, particularly in the management area. Um, we have a number of collections policies and procedures that need to be finalized and put into a manual. Um, you know, we don't have an emergency plan to update, unfortunately. We st still have to start from scratch uh, where that's concerned. Um, that's become um, a significant focus for us going forward over the next couple of years. Uh, we need to address the need for a fire suppression system. Given the age of our building, um, you know, if it were to catch fire, it would probably just go poof, and so might our, the entirety of our collection. Um, so this is something that we hadn't really given much thought to, to tell the truth prior to reorg. Um, but has now become a bit of a red flag and uh, something we really need to address. Uh, we still need to address the issue of uh, storage for works on paper. Um, and going forward, we'd like to replace the utility shelves, which are really pretty unstable, um, with new compact shelving. Um, and this would probably be a project for 2017. So we have some um, furniture upgrades that we still want to do that will allow us to grow our capacity and um, be able, be able us, uh, enable us to um, resume a more robust uh, acquisitions uh, kind of policy. We had a moratorium on collecting for about 10 years. Um, so this, um, this project will begin us to allow, allow us to begin collecting again on a small scale, and then hopefully with uh, a few more upgrades, we can in, increase that, that uh, activity. So that's basically all I have to say. So thank you, everyone. And, uh, <laughs>